losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness sake because they said that we'd have a new owner and we'd have a new a top class manager and to be fair to the, to the board and to um, everyone who worked on that side they've done they done a great job in the end it took it took probably longer than expected um, but from the first day of pre-season we had a new owner and we had a new manager Shinawatra and Ericsson were taking over a side that finished 14th in the Premier League the previous season avoiding relegation by just four points New players were needed, and Julie arrived. In a hectic first month in charge, the new regime had spent more than £20 million on eight signings. I knew about that uh, Manchester City was interested in me very, very late, so everything was done in a big rush, I w would say. So when we started, of course, I, I looked at the players which were in, and. Uh, Many of them I knew since uh, I was with England, of course, I saw them, saw them playing many, many times. But uh, with the project, Mr. Dr. Texan's project that he wants to make the club bigger, better, he wants to be uh, maybe not top, top in the, in the league, but he wants, to, he wants to play in Europe in the future. That's what he told me. And looking at that, of course, then I thought we need we need uh, a lot of new players if we shall do that. Um, so we bought in seven, eight, nine new players, and that was done very quickly. And the priority, which you said, was no, we don't want to buy any old football players, which uh, uh, has a future behind them, more or less. <laughs> uh, young players, interesting players. Uh, Players with good technique, uh, good football understanding, and yeah, here we are. <laughs> My name is Rolando Bianchi. He scored a lot of goals in Italy last season. He's a young uh, striker, he's a bomber. Uh, he was a bomber in Italy and I hope he will be that in the Premier League as well, of course. That's why we bought him. Yeah. 
Yeah, my name is Jason Fernandez. My last club was FC Sion. We took him for uh, because he's an extremely good talent. He's uh, like a sitting midfielder with a lot of energy, and he's one of the best talent in Switzerland. And he's good for now, but uh, he will be good for the future. Hello, my name is Giovanni. Yeah, Giovanni, he's uh, full of fantasy, good in one against one situations. He's good to, to have on the pitch, he's good to have on the bench to put in if you need uh, that kind of play. He, he's a, also a player with a lot of experience. My name is Martin Petro. Petrov has a left foot uh, which is uh, extremely good. Uh, free kicks, corners, uh, crosses, shots. And another player, he's not old, but he has a lot of experience as well. And uh, it's important that we didn't only buy uh, young players, 20, 21 years. So uh, Giovanni and Petrov, they have experience as well. My name is Javi Garrido. Garrido is a young player and he's uh, Basque, he's uh, powerful, good left foot, uh, good defender. I think it's a good buy for City. Hello, my name is Elano Blume. Really, he doesn't need any, <laughs> any explanation. Elano is a great player, uh, he has everything. Can score goals, uh, fantasy, passing, shooting, and uh, maybe he's in one way the most experienced player we, we took in, even if he's a young player. Hey, my name is Valerie Bogino. He's a very interesting striker, good left foot, scoring goals, but a lot of movements uh, to create for others to, to score goals. He's been already in Lecce, Fiorentina and Juventus. I remember he did uh, success at once he, he came and of course he was at that time, and I, I think he still is, the youngest play, player ever playing in Serie A. And uh, he's been around for a long time but he's only 21. And I believe very much in him. Hi, I'm Vedran Koluka. He's a defender who can play right back, he can play centre back of course, good header, good feet, rather quick to be that tall and uh, another one with experience from the national team, England should know that, <laughs> he was on the side uh, um, great there when they beat it England. Koloka and Borginov's work permits weren't through in time for them to play against Valencia, but six of the new signings were in the squad to face the Spanish giants. I don't know if all of them knew the name of the other ones. <laughs> so, of course, it was difficult at that time, but um, you could see it in that game that, uh, yeah, it, it can be good, this. Ireland again. Shooting charts, good effort. Unlucky from Johnson. Hit it beautifully. Canizares beaten. City a little bit unlucky. Ireland again comes back to Elano, sweeps it over, great ball, oh the second time they've hit the woodwork, that time Bianchi, terrific ball, good header as well, the second time Canizares beaten. I talked to all the players before, uh, team talk of course, and uh, uh, I said we, we have very very short time to, to get it right here because uh, the league starts very very soon. So it's important that uh, we help each other out there and that you, you try your best and um, uh, try to play football together, try to help each other, run for each other. And that you could see in that game that they really tried hard. Giovanni to Petrov. Outside him is Garrido. Great ball in. Oh, and again, Hildebrand just didn't know what to do with it. Bianchi just couldn't get anything on it. 
my message to them was, okay, we don't speak the same language. You're coming from different parts of the world. The league starts in a few days. And if we want to have it right, if we want to perform, you really have to put your effort in and, uh, and try to help your, uh, your companion. Uh, and they did it, and they still do it. Despite a decent performance against Valencia, City lost 1-0. There were just seven days between that game and the big Premier League kickoff. It was a week full of all the usual pre-season formalities. New club suits. New faces. Heard of a couple of them, but not enough to know what, what, what sort of players they were and I think it's, it's the sort of players that they are is the top class at the national so as soon as they come out training they you can see they, they have something and um, the manager's obviously done very well in his transfer dealings in, in his other clubs and I mean no one has any reason to doubt him. I might have spoke to David James actually, who, who had uh, spoke to him really highly, and I suppose James has more reason than most to not like him because he, he got dropped. But he spoke really highly of him, thought thought he was a very very nice man and a very good manager. So, I mean, for me personally, it was um, the chance, probably my first chance to work with a foreign a foreign coach. So it was just a bit of excitement and looking forward then to a, a whole new regime. <laughs> The day before the Premier League season got underway, hundreds of fans queued outside the club shop to buy the new third kit that City would be wearing in the season's opener at West Ham. What time did you get here this morning? Half past three. Half past three? Half past three. <laughs> oh my goodness. True fans, you see. Unlike them at the back. Despite the disappointing end to the last campaign, Blues fans were full of typical pre-season optimism. That's my shirt! <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll be in Europe next season, but, you know, we'll have to see how it goes. He's brought in a lot of new players and we'll see how they come, come up. I think top ten, and uh, yes, next, year, next year Europe, the yeah. year after, who knows? I don't think we know what to expect, really. We're just talking then. And nobody knows what to expect. We needed more players, you know what I mean? So, and they're well known as well. So, I think first spot will be good. <laughs> <laughs> and six points off them over there. <laughs> six points off them from Salt. I'm going in there expecting to be in the top ten yeah. at the end of the season. This is the best thing that's ever happened for City. It's about time. We've had 30 years of misery. Now yeah. we ain't having no more. We've had 30 years of earaches from the other side. Yeah. But now we might we're be able to give them some it. back, shortly. Yeah. The new Premier League season for Manchester City as a new era begins as well for the club. Kicks off at West Ham United, a club that many people still believe shouldn't have survived in the Premiership. But it is a new era for Manchester City where Dr. Taxon Shinawat and Sven Joran Eriksson now running the show at Eastlands. Well, it's Sven's first club game in more than six years. He says he could have done with another month or so to prepare. He's made eight signings, all of them foreigners. Five start this afternoon. There's also a debut for young goalkeeper Kasper Schmeichel. The other three summer recruits are all on the bench. Eriksson's first team selection in full was Schmeichel in goal, Koluka, Michael Richards, Dunn and Garrido at the back, Stephen Arlen, Dietmar Haman, Michael Johnson and Petrov in midfield, with Alano given the licence to support lone striker Bianchi. West Ham had spent big money over the summer as well, and it was a tough opener for the new-look City. 
a couple of minutes late in kicking off for the 2007-2008 Premier League season underway for West Ham and Manchester City. I was very curious. I wouldn't say nervous, m not more than normal, but very, very curious to see what's going to happen here. Because we had trained very good, uh, everything, preparation, very, very good. But anyhow, how good are we? How bad are we? What do we need? But that was, that was a big test, of course. Uh, away game and against a very good team as well. Boamorte swung in, easily dealt with again by Manchester City. They've just not really asked any questions at all. The City defensive first time. Boamorte right now. He's broken kindly for Manchester City and they're away. 3v3. Still going over to the far post and City take the lead and it's Rolando Bianchi, one of the debutants for Manchester City, 18 goals last season in Serie A and he opens his account in the Premier League. Well the defence was shocking but superb play by Alana the Brazilian sliding in far post Bianchi. At full stretch, Alan Kerbishley will be asking his defenders how on earth Alano was allowed so much space and allowed to slip that ball in. West Ham nil, Manchester City won. Everyone was wondering and questioning how we were going to knit together on the on the first game, and I think the first game has been the boost that we needed for the for the rest of the season, where we've we've all come in, everyone. And when the new players who came in played really well and we all settled and, and seemed to be playing like we played for, for years together. The man has broken kindly again. Petrov with a strike, palmed away by Green. Who's going to get there first? And Green recovers well to deny Bianchi a second goal for him and for City. In the second half, the Blues dealt with what little West Ham threw at them. And teenage defender Micah Richards, who'd moved from fullback into central defence following the departure of Sylvain Distan, caught the eye. As did new signing Alano, and when he made way for fellow Brazilian Giovanni with 10 minutes to go, it highlighted the strength and depth of Sven's new look city. Zamora goes down by her man. She's making infield there towards Johnson. Zanua, another Sarah's feet there, and there, still going, no one in the middle though at the moment, he could do with Bojanov popping up, he is up there now, here's the chance for Giovanni, what a strike, Manchester City double their lead, three minutes to go, Giovanni goes and celebrates with the travelling City supporters, it's West Ham nil, Manchester City 2, Bianchi early on, late on it's Giovanni, and Svenjorn Eriksson has a big, big smile, because he's got plenty to smile about, and Anua could have gone down once, could have gone down twice, picked out Giovanni, he says to Robert Green, you pick that one out. What a strike from the Brazilian who's only been on a few minutes, and surely now Manchester City have ended their opening day hoodoo and proving some of the doubters wrong maybe as well that a team assembled in barely a month could work together, could function together and go and win Premier League matches. I think the, many of the players had the same uh, question mark as I had before that game. Uh, well, where are we? And. Um, Afterwards, perfect for the fans and for the players and for the club and for me. Uh, I suppose there were a lot of press out there waiting <laughs> after that game. You could see it in the press conference. But um, I, I always had the feeling that sooner or later this would be a good, very good football team. But that we were ready already at that time. I, I was surprised, yes. Dream start for Sven and for his new signings and for the new club owner. Mullins.
couldn't get past Petrov and Sven's finding because it's City's day it's finished West Ham nil Manchester City 2 Bianchi midway through the first half then late on the icing on a very sweet cake came from substitute Giovanni 2 nil you know well that's perhaps flattered West Ham United it could have been by more it should have been by more but Sven would have settled for an opening day clean sheet and three points away from home a big smile hugs all around and Manchester City's new era is well and truly underway the last thing you want in, in football for a, for a team for a club for yourself is complacency and when you um, come to a club or if you haven't got enough competition I think this was one of the reasons as well why we did struggle last year uh, we well, the players more or less knew if they're fit they're playing mm. and uh, you can get a bit uh, lazy and laid back and, and complacent if, if this happens so I've always found the more players the better the players the better I played and, 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 and the best I got out of me and, and I got for the club because um, I think competition that's what it's all about then you see how players react Ericsson had been criticised in the press for admitting to signing some of the new players despite only having seen them on video. After the game, he had some defiant words for his old friends in the media. Only one who wants to be uh, stupid can come out with a thing like that. So <laughs> I, I, I couldn't care less about that. I mean, uh, of course I knew all the players before I signed them. It's, if someone wants to be stupid, he, he is. The press is... Uh, if they want to be nasty, they can be nasty for whatever you do here in life, so <laughs> I'm used to that. Of course I don't go out to buy a player for five, six, seven, eight million pounds and not checking out if he's a good football player or not. I mean, stupid I can be, but, but not that stupid. The final preparations for the first home game against Derby, four days after the win at West Ham. This was the big test of any newfound confidence. Despite the catchy slogans, City were terrible at home last season. They failed to score a single league goal at Eastlands after New Year's Day. First home game in charge at Eastlands for Sven Jorn Eriksson. And there's a massive crowd in as well tonight. Not just to welcome the new manager and his new look team, but after the sparkling performance down at West Ham. They all want to know, can they break this home hoodoo? They've not scored here since New Year's Day. I never spoke to them about, the, uh, about that because what happened before I and the new players came here is, uh, has nothing to do with us today. And I never speak about the past. Uh, I never told the players because it's like to offending the, those players who played here last season that they scored very few goals at home and so on. So I never speak about that. I only speak about the present and, and the future. It's a chance for Derby County. Schmeichel, his dad would have been proud of that one. There's a push in the back on Stephen Pearson. Schmeichel seemed to be wrong-footed, but he made himself big. He's learnt a lot from Schmeichel Senior. You know, every game has its own story. So that was a difficult game because Derby fighting team, defending, defending, defending. So every time you win the ball, you almost have to, to beat uh, 10 opponents all the time. And, and of course, it's difficult to find space and so on, but a good teamwork, Good, uh, good effort, good football. Uh, maybe not the best we have played, but uh, that was also merit to, to Derby because they, I think Derby did a very good game against us. Johnson, good play by the youngster. Tolano, it's Johnson again, it's Johnson, it's 1 0 to City at long, long last. Almost nine months on, City score at home, Sven's out of his seat, so two of the fans, it's Manchester City 1, Derby County 0. Last year it was, it was difficult because um, we had to hang in there because um, you know we were near relegation and we had to get a few results so we played a quite defensive formation 
and uh, you know I was you know part of the defensive formation, which you know you can't get far with that much. You know it's physically impossible. But this year, you know, we're a lot more attacking, and uh, and uh, that's enabled me to uh, get forward more. And there we talk about a very good football player. Unfortunately, he's been as a growing problem, so he he um, he doesn't train as much as he could do. But that will go over in a short time, I hope. Uh, yeah, fantastic goal and very very important goal to um, that won the game for us, and uh, that was. The most important thing, of course, three more points, and suddenly we have six after two games. <laughs> the third game, Manchester United at home. Well, how much have you been waiting for this game? It's the 148th competitive Manchester derby, the 137th in the league, and the 21st in the Premier League and surely not for many many years has the blue harp of Manchester wanted and relished this day so much. I remember one of the first days I came to the airport it came one Man Manchester City fan to me and said Sven don't worry about the league or Europe or anything just beat Manchester United twice that's it. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a feeling of every fan but it's important to look at the table as well. <laughs> Confidence absolutely flying after the opening start of the season, which has been nothing short of perfect with two clean sheets and two victories. But there's a slight spanner in the works today for Sven Juren's side as Stephen Ireland, one of the local heroes, is out ill. The Irishman with uh, five full international caps is to be replaced by Giovanni in the starting lineup. He will take that uh, position on the right of midfield. It's the newest manager in the Premier League against the longest serving manager. Some enmity between the two, according to what you may read in your Sunday papers before the game. I always. Uh said that uh, Alex and myself, we always had a good relationship. Sometimes when I had my previous job, uh, I defended the interest of England and he defended the interest of uh, Manchester United fairly. And we didn't have the same opinions always about things. And uh, he doesn't like friendly games. And uh, to be fair, when I was in uh, Lazio, I didn't like friendly games. <laughs> Italy games at all, so <laughs> I understand him. But uh, so we had some d dispute sometimes. But I mean, we've been eating dinner together and things like that. So we don't uh, we don't fight, and uh, now uh, we don't have any dispute at, at all because uh, he defends the interest of United and I the interest of Manchester City today. And the new chairman will be, as always, right behind his side and hoping his dream start continues. It really is going to be a day to savour. The weather's a little brighter than we were promised by some of the forecasters. And City with this already good advantage over Manchester United, knowing that they will be above them no matter what at the end of today's game. Six points against two. And top spot beckons as well in the embryonic Premier League table. It's a little different from Stuart Pearce, you know. I uh, totally respect Stuart Pearce as a manager, you know. Giving my debut at 17. And, um, you know, he's a bit more shouty, you know, gets you up for the game. But Sven's a bit more relaxed and just, you know, chilled out. And, you know, gives you confidence, like, to go out there. Before the United game, he said to us all, you know, uh, you're better than you're better than them, you know. A better footballing team, you know. After the game, we come out actually believing it. So yeah, he's he's yeah, he's a top guy. The atmosphere, exactly as you'd expect, is electric. The city of Manchester Stadium. Our referee this afternoon, by the way, is Mark Cladenberg, who didn't take a single yellow card in his first game in the Premier League this season when he refereed Everton against Wigan. Let's hope for the sake of the game that continues this afternoon. A man from Tyne and Weir will get us underway. It's Ericsson City against Ferguson's United. Whether or not there's a bottle of wine in there, whether it's a house red or should we say a house blue or a £400 bottle, 
remains to be seen. But the real spoils, not the alcohol, but the three points. We are underway. And City's United Nations tackling United. Even on the new players, if they are young, many of them have a lot of uh, experience of uh, football in other countries on uh, uh, international level, level as well. And uh, all of these players have played big games before. Maybe not at big, uh, as big as this one, but uh, I think and, uh, we talked about what it means for fans and things like that before the game. Tevez with a decent ball through, first chance, Force United, kept out by Schmeichel at the double. Kasper saves to deny United. Nani saw it open up for once City's defence this season. Maybe caught a little ball watching, but what an excellent save that was from Schmeichel. First of all diving to his right, and then back to his feet quickly to keep out to his left. Just six minutes into the game, a blow for the Blues. Valery Bozhinov, who'd been given his first start in place of opening day scorer Bianchi, was stretched off with what turned out to be a long-term cruciate knee ligament injury. On the positive side, Micah Richards was growing in stature at the centre of City's defence. The crowd roar and encouragement to Tevez is through in between two. Great tackle. Micah Richards did superbly well because just for a moment, the little Argentinian wizard looked like he might have the pace to squeeze through the big centre-backs. That's why he's in the England squad. That's why Sven stuck with him. Birmingham-born youngster. Yeah, obviously every every city, you know, city dreams to play in a in a derby. Um, you know, when I made my debut in a derby last year again um, at a United's ground, and um, I come off at half time with a hip injury. But this time, you know, I managed to get through the 90 minutes and uh, I got man of the match in the game as well. Obviously, that was, was good for me, but as a team, I thought it was outstanding on that day, you know. Some people might have said United might have won, but, you know, we dug in, everyone gave 100%. And in the game, it was just, you know, I think one of the best feelings, you know, I've had since I've been at the club. back heel from Nani and the offside flag stays down and City escape again Patrice Everett lovely overlap all coming down the City right at the moment great running from Everett City again slightly guilty of ball watching Luka did just enough to put him off as he was making the room to shoot can I see the word penalty cross Mr Ferguson's lips? Manchester United are asking the questions at the moment. Through the middle again, Tevez. Can Richards stop him again? Tevez has done him this time to the right. Richards recovers again brilliantly. Well, if you think Carlos Tevez is quick, take a look at Michael Richards. Yeah, Tevez, he was a handful, you know. But, you know, some say I got the better of him, so I, 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 was, I was happy with that. Richards again beats Tevez. Nice layoff as well from Petro. Johnson. City expectations growing here. The shot is in! City take the lead! A bit of Brazilian magic against the run of play, you have to say. But Giovanni, whose place in the starting lineup wasn't even guaranteed, has given City an amazing lead. 31 minutes on the clock. Space for only the second time in the game. Johnson couldn't find the target with the first effort. But just a minute or two later, a wonderful shot from Giovanni. Took a slight deflection, did it off Vidic. It was enough to swerve it into the net. Van der Sar helpless. And City lead in the big derby. The minus touch for Sven. It's happening again. And is history repeating itself? The man who scored for Benfica against Manchester United in December 2005 to knock them out of the Champions League effectively with the aid of a deflection of that man, Nemanja Vidic. 
could be knocking already a big hole in Manchester United's title aspirations. Oh, Schmeichel's lost it. And good reactions again from Richards. Oh, his heart must have been in his mouth. It is a greasy surface out there. Good football match and uh, maybe a little bit lucky. Maybe they could have scored. They had some occasions. But anyhow, we won it. And uh, of course, if you're a fan and you live and have lived up here for many, many years, uh, of course, to to beat Manchester United in a derby, that's all, always a big, big achievement. Manchester United have four corners in the first half. Schmeichel again is saved by the bar first time and then Scholes puts the rebound wide. But well, we said that Vidic was a real danger man along with Ferdinand. He made it this time, Schmeichel half came and then was left to watch and hope and the woodwork saved him and Scholes couldn't put the rebound in Vidic clearly getting there above Dunn, not sure if that struck his head or his shoulder actually on doing the replay lovely chip Giggs drilled in the danger again it's Richard again that is top draw defending There were two red shirts, but there was one city. We know that uh, United will always have a lot of possession. That's their way of playing, and uh, and um, you have to live with that. You have to defend and uh, win the ball in uh, important areas, and then try to create something. And we did that. We didn't create a lot of chances. I wouldn't say that, but uh, we won it. And <laughs> Chris Eagles, another run here, came on a sub against Portsmouth and immediately, very nearly, a goal for either him or Tevez in front of him. Tevez was the nearer, tried to flick it goalwards and his boot just wouldn't make contact. Another chance for Manchester United. Giggs tormenting and Tevez just couldn't steer it in. And Penza calling for it wide against Everett. Physical. Referee ways play on there. Petrov. That's ambitious from Korluka. Get nothing if you don't try. Struck it sweetly. Confidence is very important in football. You know that you can beat Manchester United, you know that you beat them, then you know that you can play against any team on, on let, that level. He's getting the best out of players here, picked from all around the world. Bulgarians, Brazilians, an Italian, a Spaniard, and a Croatian have all arrived. And yet it's at the centre of defence, we're a brave Irishman there, and alongside him, an Englishman with apparently world at his feet, Micah Richards, have kept them at bay. Fraser Campbell wearing 39, just caught Richard Dunn there. Now, will he have to go off if there's blood on the face? We're in the final two minutes. Petrov receiving instructions. From the master. Now, is that a signal? Is there going to be three minutes of time added on? I just thought I saw Sven raise three fingers. Giovanni's goal on 31 minutes, fit to win any derby. Did take a deflection, but what a shot it was. Two nil against West Ham with one goal in the first half. One goal in the first half against Derby on Wednesday was good enough to win it. One goal here may be good enough to win. 
if they can keep out injury time on this final minute with just 10 men until Duncan get back on the field because all subs have been used Skoll switches it be a bit of danger here, Hermann's tracking back, is he quick enough to sniff out Everest's chance of a cross? The cross does come in, it's pressure, Burrito misses it, there's four red shirts in the middle expecting a cross here. Shea plays it against the defender and wins the corner. Manchester United, fifth of the second half by my reckoning. He could ball there clapping his hands, urging his teammates not to squander two points. 90 minutes are up now. And it's through everyone and missed. Goodness me, for the third or fourth time in the game, Carlos Tevez seemingly had the goal at his mercy, and once again he's put it wide. But that was the clearest chance of all. Schmeichel was rooted. And Tevez... Half a metre wide. Oh no, Sir Alex. It didn't go in. It's still 1 0. And you are still without a win. New players, new coach, new owner. To start like that, uh, three wins, and one of them is to beat our cousin or whatever you call them, uh, Manchester United. That's, that's big. And we, we were very, ha very happy, all of us, after that game. Everett takes the one-two. Patrice Everett is there to be late heartbreak. Not if Richard Dunn has anything to do with it. The rock. 35 Irish international caps, but Everett's free again here. Again, it's Richard Dunn. Dunn and Richards. Immovable. A man is almost celebrating there, is he? Four minutes now of time added on. Has been played at the city of Manchester Stadium. Everyone in red is forward, and that is the final whistle. It's still 100% perfect for Svenja and Eriksson. And Manchester City are proudly atop of the Premier League. Mergi says, Well done. Perhaps the enmity between the two for their time when Sven was in charge of England has been forgiven. But Giovanni's wonderful strike. Some fortune and some heroics from Schmeichel and some glaring misses from Manchester United, especially near the end from the young Argentinian Carlos Tevez, mean that it's Manchester City that take the spoils. On a damp day, they care not about the weather in the blue half of Manchester. Micah Richards was a tower of strength in the defence. A third successive clean sheet. And Manchester City go to Arsenal believing they can do anything in what could be a magical season for those City fans around the world. Their dreams have come true today. They've beaten the great enemy for the third time in five home games. They win the local derby. And Spenior and Eriksson is the mastermind. Giovanni's goal then, the final score, Manchester City won. Manchester United nil. To see uh, that we are high in the league, that's, that's nice to open the newspaper in the morning and see their position in the table. Very, very nice. It might have been a bit early to be looking at league tables too seriously, but it did make wonderful reading for City fans after three games. And that derby win over United left them struggling in the bottom half. Everybody was already talking about the immediate impact Sven had made at City. And there was a noticeable air of confidence around the club. I think um, when any new manager coming into a club, he, there's, I suppose there's a lot of time spent on 11 v 11s just to make sure everyone knows their role in, in the team. Um, his, uh, sometimes 11 v 11s can get quite boring, but the way the manager does them and hands and Faz has done them is they they do them for like seven or eight minutes and make sure everyone gets to the point and then that's it and we'll change them and move on to something else so it keeps training fresh and, and interesting and the new players had settled in quickly because 
they've all come at the same time. They don't speak the same language. They all want to be friends, and they all have to speak English. So it's uh, before we've probably had too many of the one country come at the one time, and they just end up friendly <laughs> because they speak that language. Whereas these bunch of lads, as well as being very good players, are very nice, very nice people, and they. Um, they want to be part of a, a club which is successful and I'm sure they know the best way to that is to make sure everyone is together. I'm on the training ground every day. Uh, yes, of course I'm there and uh, I have a lot of good coaches. So we, we plan uh, in the morning what to do and then we go out doing it. And sometimes I, I take some session, other times the coaches. So, But it's always a teamwork and when we go out there, we know exactly, more or less every minute, what we shall do today. And by planning that, uh, of course, we look, we're looking always at the last game we played. What was good, what was not good, what can we do better, if it's defending corners, if it's uh, attacking, if it's to keep the width better when we're attacking, if it's to track people down, uh, defending, whatever it is. Uh, which you have to work on. His way of playing football is different. Um, there's a lot of managers and teams in the Premier League who play um, Premier League football, I suppose, 100 miles an hour up and down and up and down. And there's no real control, whereas the manager wants us to have control of the ball at times. And for for the defenders, it's a lot better. We seem to not be under constant pressure this season. And, when it goes forward or into midfield, the players are passing the ball around and keeping it. It's walking pace for City. They're in no rush now. They lead 1-0. Well, the two Portuguese speakers, the Brazilians, Ilano and Giovanni, exchanging passes three times before Ilano says, well, we're leading. We'll do what we want with it. All the way back to Schmeichel. Be too clever with it. Good distribution from Schmeichel there to Petrov. Strength from Impenza was impressive. Maybe a bit early for the Olays. Again, here's Kaluka pushing on more, forcing Nani back. Goes for the return, won't get there ahead of Van der Sar, We try to stick to what, uh, what we think we are good at. And uh, we don't change organisation if we play at home or away. Uh, and we, we talk about the openers, of course, and we show video and things like that. But for me, the most important is the way we playing, defending and attacking, not exactly how the opponents play. But City's next opponents were the team widely regarded as the best footballing side in the Premier League. The Blues were at the Emirates Stadium to face Arsenal. The fantastic setting of the Emirates Stadium in North London is the latest stop-off point on Manchester City's great adventure under Sven Juran Eriksson. But what a test today. Already the best Premiership start ever for Manchester City and their supporters. It's 46 years since they started a season with four straight wins. But can they equal that today and rewrite a little bit of more history under Mr Eriksson's incredible start to this memorable campaign? Manchester City in their familiar all light blue kit taking on Arsenal all the heat out there and it is quite a hot day out there in the sunshine come to bear later on Sven Juran Eriksson got some kind words from Arsene Wenger in the pre-match press conferences how has the master plan gone for this game you meet another team which play excellent football uh, United and Arsenal are maybe the best teams and have been the best teams to look at for many years now, uh, 
the ball goes very quickly, one touch, two touch, etc. And you know, and we knew once again, here we have to defend very well, very compact. Don't give them space and, and time. And I think we, we did that and we also created occasion against Arsenal. And uh, we, we didn't went there just to put uh, 11 men in front of the goal. We, we tried to play and uh, yeah, a little bit of luck we can score as well. Oh, Richards can take on all comers at the moment. Did so for England midweek as well. Petrov. Johnson making the run and Johnson is through here. It bounced kindly for him, needs support. Petrov on the left will strike for goal, but it's wide. The Arsenal were caught square then and they were well aware that there was a City player who'd strayed offside. Watching Penza, he'd gone too early. Johnson might have been trying to look for him, but it came back off the red shirt to play himself onside. Unfortunately, Petrov's angle was just a little bit too acute. Stephen Ireland celebrated his 21st birthday this week. What a great present it could be if he could score. Petrov, Ireland's on the far post. It's Petrov! It's just a shade away from continuing this remarkable city fairy tale. 57 minutes at the Emirates. Lovely disguised reverse pass. That was beautiful. And that was almost beautiful, wasn't it, from Petrov? And Penzer has played him brilliantly here. It's Emil and Penzer. It's a good save from Armunia, who stepped into the breach for Arsenal. Error prone Jens Lehmann, out injured. And Armunia might just have stopped City taking the lead again. It was a wonderful piece of movement off the ball from Penzer to get into the position. First time touch was brilliant from Ireland. The team we're in, you can express yourself and um start trying things you know i felt like in the last few years it's kind of if you lose the ball you could lose your place you know so this time now with, with fans just go and express yourself so hopefully now i can start adding a bit more to my game like uh, a few tricks and skills and just just become myself now there's danger for city and is that a penalty richards says he makes contact with the ball but the referee looks to the official on the far side and the penalty is given. Micah Richards, who's been faultless throughout the season, looks like he's been penalised here. The referee just goes to confirm with his assistant. Was it a goal-scoring opportunity will be the next question. Clem didn't look like Richards got the ball. The penalty is awarded. 67th minute, save from Schmeichel, what a story, the penalty wasn't the greatest, but the 20 year old keeper has once again confounded his critics, well you don't want to make too many comparisons with his father, and Percy went for power down the middle and that was a poor penalty, but the long barrier of Schmeichel keeps the dream alive, for the Blues. Here is Van Persie again. He's missed penalties and then scored before. But Schmeichel pounces to thwart the Dutchman again. He was fantastic and I mean, uh, all games he played for us, uh, seven I think it was. Uh, I think he did very well. And um, no surprises. Yeah, you can say Casper <laughs> Schmeichel is a surprise that he can handle big games like that. It's Fabregas, wide to Clare again. Probably been Arsenal's best player this afternoon, and Fabregas has scored. Finally, the run is ended. Clare did unpick the defence, and Fabregas supplied the coup de grace. 80 minutes gone at the Emirates, and after a rear guard that has lasted for 350 minutes, Kasper Schmeichel is beaten, and Fabregas scores. A rare goal, a quality finish. To lose a game like that, for me it's okay. You know that the uh, team, the players that did everything what we expected them to do, even more. 
and uh, with a bit, little bit of luck we could have had one point there. But. Well, like father, like son now, Schmeichel's up again in the dying seconds at the Emirates. It's gone towards him and saved by his opposite number, Armunia. And that could be the point safe. We played reasonably well to, felt we probably could have got a, a draw or maybe could have snatched the victory at Arsenal, but we're disappointed to have lost 1-0 at, uh, at Arsenal, which is um, a sign of the way we're going. From that defeat, I, uh, I spoke to the players in the dressing room after and said, OK, we lost this game, but we lost it with uh, the heads very high. Because sometimes you have to say, OK, we met Arsenal, they played extremely good football and they scored once and we were unlucky we didn't score. Next up was a testing Carling Cup second round tie at championship side Bristol City and Sven rang the changes. I think uh, in occasions like that and sometimes, uh, if we have a squad, squad of 20 plus players, uh, when shall you test them and see if they're good enough? Those who normally sit on the bench or sit on the stand. So I, I thought at that time it was a very good opportunity. And I think they did very well. So I don't regret that at all. Thank you with another good layoff. Penzer and Logan interchange the pass as well, and the ball's worked out to Michael Ball, Giovanni. Brazilian switches it inside. Ireland. Lovely low from Bianchi again. It's a chance for Mpenza, and that is the opening goal of the night. And the opening goal on a potential road to Wembley, perhaps. And it comes from Emil Mpenza. His first goal of the season. And the 20 year old young Belgian who's uh, really firing in danger in the Bristol City penalty area in the early stages this evening. And the former Schalke man. Buried that one. The keeper might just have got a touch on it, but couldn't stop it going in the net. But the assist from Bianchi was every bit as impressive as the finish from Emil and Penza. This wheel went to ground a little early, and Penza made him pay. And that will settle any early nerves. We could take it by Mackindo. Elliott's header. And there's Bradley. Oh! Oh, he swept over an equaliser! The 24-year-old who began as a trainee at Newcastle but never made an appearance for them in the league has come through with the equaliser for Bristol City. His first ever in this competition and he has rocked Manchester City with an equaliser that the home team's possession recently has been threatening. Decently worked set piece, well won header by Elliot. No one got to the ball quicker than Bradley All when it was loose in the penalty box. And the right back levels it. 1 1. And now, could we be heading for extra time? Yeah, it's a cup game, and you play against a team from a lower division. You know that, David then that might be the game of the year for them to play against the Premier League club. So it's always difficult, but uh, we got through and good, very good. Space, it's Bianchi, and that's a wonderful goal. Great strike from Rolando Bianchi. And Manchester City are back on course for cup victory at Bristol City. Repaying a little bit more of that huge transfer fee. Bristol City guilty here of giving the Italian far too much space. And from 22 yards or so, lovely curl on the ball. And wheel at full stretch, couldn't keep it out. The fourth highest goal scorer in Serie A last season before moving to Eastlands. And a wonderful goal for Bianchi. A little bit of emotion. From the quiet Swede. City finished August with four wins and just that solitary defeat at Arsenal. That form was recognised with the Manager of the Month award for Ericsson and the Player of the Month award for Michael Richards, who'd impressed for City and England.
it's nice to have been, you know, voted um, Barclays Player of the Month. But yeah, um, it's it's nice. I, I thought I've done all right um, this month, but it's not just me. I, I think it's a team team as well. It's been a team team effort, and um, I've, I've done away all right when I've been with England as well. So it's nice. For England, Richards had been bombing forward from right back, whilst at City he'd been all conquering at centre half. Cut out again by who else? Michael Richards is having a stormer at the moment. Put me right back centre half. I'll, I'll do 100% for the team, and that's all I can say really. But however well he does for club and country, the teenager has someone making sure he doesn't get too cocky. My dad always just says, tells me to keep level-headed, you know. Um, and if I, if I do that, hopefully there's bigger things to come in the future. Whilst being delighted with his award, Ericsson was keener to praise his young defender. I think he deserves that better than I, I deserved it, because he's been absolutely fantastic, and I don't think anyone could argue with that. I mean, how he played for us fantastically, and then 19 years old playing, and playing very, very well for England, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. At the start of September, City made the short trip to Blackburn Rovers. If you ask me about all the games we played, uh, I would say that one I was not happy with because I think we should have done uh, better, much better than we did. We defended okay, some set pieces we were not um, up to the best, but. Uh, we didn't offend them, we didn't, uh, by saying that, we, we didn't attack at all against them. At least corner, headed across the face of the goal and knocked in now, surely it is. Blackburn Rovers take the lead. We've been playing 13 minutes and it's so, so simple for Benny McCarthy. We expected a, a very aggressive uh, Blackburn, uh, kicking and uh, fighting. But uh, it was no aggressivity in that game at all. But there were two red cards in the game at Ewood Park. After Blackburn's two guy was sent off, Richard Dunn received his marching orders for a second bookable offence. But this was a blip in an otherwise great start to the season for the skipper, who'd been a pleasant surprise for his new manager. I saw him many times, and if I compare with four or five years ago today, yes, for me, he's a much, much better player. I saw him and I think, uh, no, I didn't like him at that time, but today I like him very much. He can do everything, he's a good header, he's strong, he's a rather good passer on the ball, he's quick, quicker than you think, and he has a lot, lot, lot of experience, of course, in, uh, on this level. And it should be nice to see if he, if he was English. You can't say that to an Irishman, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but if he was English... Uh, he would be I, in the squad. I think he would be a challenge to all the other central defenders. I think so. The Blackburn game ended in a lacklustre 1-0 defeat. That's the only game which I think uh, we could have done better. And uh, after that game, of course, it was a break international football. So it 10 days before I could uh, speak to them again, and that was a long time. But uh, when they came back, all of them, I, um, we showed them a video, short video about how we played in uh, against Black Blackburn, and we're talking at um, if we want to win football games, if we want to be uh, on the top half of the league, uh, this is not good enough. And I think they understood it, uh, accepted it, and since then, I think uh, things got better and better. Welcome to the city of Manchester. The international programme is out of the way and domestic matters can resume. And certainly a, a fascinating picture here and featuring players who've been outstanding, particularly for England, during the international European qualifying matches. But now they need to pick up for where they left off. Manchester City looking to get back on the right road after that brilliant start to the season. Aston Villa come here to Eastlands, very much a team in form. That was a very important game for us, very, very important because uh, we lost against Blackburn, didn't play good football, so it was vital uh, to show what we are, what we are made of, 
against Aston Villa. And there we started again to play very good football. Penta jumping and getting to it first. Now is there an opening? Oh, that's an excellent save. Johnson getting through there and Scott Carson called upon for the first time, had the reactions to deal with it. And Penza won it. The sale was in there. Villa should have got it away. The deflections went their way, but that was an excellent ball. Getting forward is, uh, you know, going to help you score goals, obviously. And um, and luckily, you know, I've had some good players to play me in, you know, my Lano and a few others that came in and uh, and, uh, and it's went well for me so far. Carson is getting ahead to that, but the further clearance was from Boomer, a man getting it down for City. Johnson gets the re return ball. Johnson going through here and with a chance and a goal for Manchester City. Excellent individual effort there by Michael Johnson. And what a flying start to the second half by the home side. Deary played it to me. I played a 1 2 with Alano. And, uh, you know, the, the ball back from him was perfect. It was right into my stride, didn't have to break stride. And uh, um, Penza has uh, dragged the defender away. So, it's, you know, it's uh, created a little gap for me. And I uh, drove into it and, uh, and finished quite well. And another example of what a fine prospect he is. Michael Johnson, well, oh, that's what his teammate Casper Schmeichel thinks of that solo effort. And... Uh, a rare moment of animation as well from the manager and worthy of the applause and 19 year old Michael Johnson has made his mark on this game bit of rain on the old specs but uh, that won't trouble the city manager there's the final whistle it's a victory to Manchester City Michael Johnson's goal separated the teams and what a goal it was too it was a very, very important game, and I think all the players, they felt that as well, that, uh, because no one was happy after Blackburn. I felt after that game, now we are on the, the right road again uh, after, after the defeat against Blackburn. The progress of Johnson and Richards highlighted the ongoing success of City's acclaimed academy, from which 25 players have graduated to the first team in nine years. It's fantastic taking so coming through so many good football players. So how they work must be very good. The personnel there must do a great job, and the scouting must do a great job as well, uh, because uh, even if you work very hard, the scouting system is uh, many times as important as the quality you you put on in work. I never look at the age uh, when I put on players. Uh, it doesn't matter, uh, and I think they are young, but they, they are good, so they shall play, and that's it. Uh, and, uh, I hope they're coming through more young players in the future, and I'm, I'm sure it will. The home win over Aston Villa put City back up to second in the Premier League, just one point behind leaders Arsenal. Next up was a trip to Fulham. It might have only been one point for the Blues, but it was one of the most entertaining games of the season. And the goal is from Simon Davis. Petrov, and it takes an inflection into the net, and Manchester City back on level terms. Great goal for the Wall. Didn't do its job. Great save, surely, and it's in from Penza. It's sensational. It's Martin Petrov at the double, and just what they were bought for. We should have won. We should have won it, and I think we gave away two points there, but happens. It was, it was a good game to see if you are a spectator. Six goals and um, good football, open football. Uh, for me, 
uh, it was a little bit too open sometimes. <laughs> And we conceded a couple of goals which we shouldn't have done. But that's football. I mean, if you want to, if you want to play open football, want to attack, want to win, when you play away, the risk is that you you can uh, have a goal as Fulham had, or a couple, I would say. But three, three away, that's that's good. And it was a positive attitude uh, w we showed. And I thought that's good for the future. In the Carling Cup third round clash with Norwich, another debutant from City's Academy, Kelvin Atuhu, set up the Blues' late winner for Giorgio Samaras on the Greek striker's first appearance of the season. Uh, Carling Cup is uh, a big trophy, it means uh, not only a trophy, but it's also a ticket to Europe. Uh, and um, I mean, if if we are a club, we haven't won anything for a long time. Uh, and it's a long time for me as well. I haven't won anything with when I was with England, so I want to win as well <laughs> something. Uh, so, of course, it's important. Um, uh, we take it seriously, and I'm very happy that we, we beat it Norwich. We didn't play good football, I must be honest. But City did play good football in their next Premier League game against Newcastle. It's an early kickoff at Eastlands as City try and preserve their 100% record. They're one of only two Premier League teams who can post that, Arsenal being the other. And the fans are wondering whether it will be a fifth successive 1 0 win here in League and Cup. Svenjorn Eriksson says he'd be happy with that. He's also been saying that he'd like more goals as down at Fulham, but he is mindful, though, that he needs to keep the back door shut. Three all draws are exciting for the fans, but they won't do any manager's blood pressure any good. Up towards Martins, here's the chance. It's the first goal as well, and over Femi Martins puts Newcastle United in front. His fourth of the season, the spectacular celebrations. I think it's fair to say that has probably come against the run of play, but Newcastle United won't mind. They're in front. It's City nil, Newcastle won. 29 minutes gone. Well, it seemed to be all pretty innocuous, but there was the killer ball, the diagonal ball, and great touch there from over Femi Martins, controlling it with one foot and then finishing it with the other. That was why Newcastle paid all those millions for him to Inter Milan. Brilliant little cushion there, and then sending it high between Richards and the goalkeeper Joe Hart. Chaluka and Penzer's just straight offside, he's getting back on now. And Chaluka delayed the pass. Now the uh, chance could be on, and Ireland, is he going to go it alone? It must be a goal for Petrov, it is, it's the equaliser. Well, the lead for Newcastle lasted just eight minutes. Martin Petrov, two goals last week down at Fulham. Now he gets his first for Manchester City at Eastlands, and we're back level. It's Manchester City 1, Newcastle United 1. Well, they beat the offside trap there, and... It was a good ball in there by Ireland because he thought about going for goal, then he realised it was going to be a very, very acute angle, and he saw that Petrov was among a couple of players coming in to the area, and a super, super finish by the Bulgarian. Ireland, you see a little look up there, but right across the area. Well, you don't like to say that Petrov couldn't miss because we've seen players do miss from that kind of situation before. Newcastle temporarily have a numerical advantage. The man dropped into the uh, back line there. Well, they're streaking forward now with Petrov, who got City's equaliser in the first half. Can he tee up a, a lead? He can for Emil Mpenza. Brilliant. We've not had two minutes of the second half, and City have come from behind, and they've taken the lead. He's scored one, he's created one, how he's loving his time at Eastlands, and Emil Mpenza gets his third goal of the season, and City are in front. And Newcastle put themselves under all manner of pressure there, but Petrov 
He had the legs to sprint and get onto the end of his own ball forward. And Mpenza had to really shape his body there to get his head onto it. And the flying header and Shea Given could do nothing about that whatsoever. But Petrov, well, he's going to get as many plaudits for that as the goal scorer Emil Mpenza. 2-1 City. Petrov. Being pursued by Nicky Butt. He's got half a shirt already. Yeah, Petrov was impressed with the former Manchester United midfielder. That was the first tug. He's really yanked it, trying to get it off him. He's over his head. Now Alano, is he going to try to crack the free kick? Deserves a goal. Everybody wants to see him get a goal. He's going for it, and he's got it. And I said it would be a special one, and they don't come much better than that. The Brazilians have a certain way of doing things. That's wrapped up the game for Manchester City. Alano with his first goal for the club. Eastlands erupt. It's Manchester City 3, Newcastle United 1. Well, we were wondering whether the free kick conceded by Nicky Butt would be costly. And that is straight into that top corner. He couldn't have picked it with any more precision whatsoever. A fairly casual run up to it. And how close is that? Right in the angle. He's deserved that goal. Top of the assists in the Premier League. And now he's off the mark. And he's getting congratulated by every single one of his teammates. The City fans had a new hero, and they worshipped him as a former midfielder looked on. Now, Joey Barton is probably thinking there's a revolution going on at City, and he could have been a part of it. I mean, during five and a half years with England, I went there many times to, to see them play. So I knew that uh, the fans are very, very good, but uh, living into it, it's much better than I, I thought. <laughs> uh, they are fantastic and uh, we need them, of course, and uh, it's beautiful to play when the stadium is, is full. And uh, even away, they are fantastic away, traveling in two, three thousands. Wonderful. That is the final whistle, and Manchester City go joint top of the Premier League, at least for a few hours. They've beaten Newcastle United by three goals to one, coming from behind to win a game for the first time in two years. They were back on top briefly. But by the end of the weekend, the Blues were third in the Premier League, three points behind leaders Arsenal. A week after the 3-1 win against Newcastle, another North East side was sent packing from Eastlands. And it was the same scoreline against Middlesbrough, as City made it five wins from the opening five home games for the first time in 33 years. After a Chris Riggett own goal put the Blues in front, that man, Elano, took centre stage again. It's up for Impenza and in towards Johnson. Johnson, nice back heel. Here's Elano to strike it. What a goal! Well, we thought the one against Newcastle was special. Well, that one even more so coming from open play. It's Manchester City 2, Middlesbrough 0, 12 minutes before half time. And yet again, Elano with an absolute stunner. There's a great little back heel there from Johnson and Elano. Had a good side of goal. And there must have been a shout from him, but four around him, and well, Schwarzer at full stretch, he was absolutely nowhere near it. Alano with an absolute peach. 2 0. Well, you can call him a playmaker if you want. I don't think he's a striker, I don't think he, 
uh, is yeah he can play wide he has done that for the, the national team Brazil sometimes but I think his best position is behind one or two strikers and uh, he's very good at finding space there and when he can turn up with the ball uh, he see things he can play in players he can shoot he can dribble so there he's extremely dangerous and he see things very quickly uh, sometimes you wonder if he has eyes in his back and it's one gift one talent which some football players have and some will never have it even how much they train Alano territory Petrov is there, the left footer, so too Michael Ball. And it's a fair shout though, it's going to be Alano. But maybe that's what the wall are expecting. It is Alano and it's in and it's 3-0 to Manchester City. It's another super, super strike by the Brazilian. They just seem to get better and better and better. That's three goals, that should be three points. It's City 3, Middlesbrough 0. Well, Schwarzer is just grasping at thin air. Nowhere near it. It's just absolute precision. And just like his goal last week from a free kick, it's on the proverbial postage stamp, right in that corner. Well, he loves the crowd. The crowd love him. If you are a, a football player, if you are a football fan, you want to see players like that who can do something special. You want to see Ronaldinho. You don't need to be a Barcelona fan to admire Ronaldinho. You want to see uh, those which have something special, and Elano is one of them. He has uh, something special. The win against Middlesbrough cemented City in third place in the Premier League. The Blues had spent only one week outside the top three. A third home game in a row, with Birmingham the visitors to Eastlands this time, gave City a chance to make it six wins out of six. The City of Manchester Stadium is expectant today, and helping the cause is Ilano, the Brazilian, flying straight back from international duty in midweek, World Cup duty indeed, with Brazil, where he scored as a substitute in the early hours of Thursday morning, but yet is still having travelled right across the Atlantic, fit for action today. Michael Johnson now. No free kick given. And then the challenge that wins it back. And fairly says the referee. Here's Joe Luca. They're lining up. Ilano. 1 0 Manchester City. There's controversy about the build up. City demanded a free kick. And then Birmingham did as they lost possession as well. But Ilano wasn't asking questions. It's his fourth goal of the season. Michael Johnson incensed he didn't get a free kick. Fabrice Ramba, surely to say, Luca looked like he might shoot, but picked out Ilano and he picked out the corner. Birmingham, I think they've played very well against us and uh, if you take the last 20, 25 minutes, they, uh, they created a lot of problems for us. So, yeah, it was not the most nice uh, Manchester City we've seen this season but anyhow three points and uh, that's history now <laughs> another record start to the season for Sven Joran Eriksson's team they beat Birmingham City by just a goal to nil and that look says to Steve Bruce boy it was close you pushed us hard but Sven can say that because his team emerges with the points Six home games, six wins. More than the Blues managed at Eastlands in the whole of the last campaign. With the new foreign stars complementing the homegrown talent, City's best start to a season in years meant they were flying high in the Premier League and earning plaudits for their stylish football. Few people would have believed
believed how big and instant an impact the new regime would have at Manchester City. He's pretty much what, what you'd expect him to be. Um, people have uh, this perception that he's you know, very quiet and things like that. Well, he is kind of, he keeps himself to himself. Um, but, uh, you know, he's a good character. He makes me laugh, he makes everyone laugh. And, um, and yeah, and he's a great manager. You've seen what he's done with the club already. I think everywhere the expectation has risen by everyone saying they're really good to watch and they could have a good season and that. But for us, it's, um, it's just the same. Um, we came into the season not really knowing what to expect of ourselves, I suppose, because we're in a new team. So far, it's gone really well. Massive confidence, you know. Uh, if you look, look at you know the league table now, it's just you know we're flying up there, you know, with the, with the, with the big guns, so to say. So, you know, we'll try to keep that going for as long as possible. But you know, we'll get too excited. You know, we don't want to give the fans, you know, too much, you know, to expect. But you know, as long as we're playing well, you know, keep picking up points. You know, we'll be fine this season. We wanted to get in the top ten, and I think that's well we're in our um, reach now. And um, Come Christmas, if we've got the right number of points, hopefully we can set a new target further up the table. I think uh, the team confirmed that uh, we are a good football team. How good we are, uh, what position we will have Christmas, uh, we will have in May, I don't know. Uh, but we are a good football team and uh, we're playing attractive football. Uh, and I hope we can go on like that. Uh, and I think we can go on like that.